In this example, I've got a little roller coaster cart just going through a vertical loop. And what I'm trying to figure out is the minimum speed to actually make it through the loop. Surely you can imagine if this thing is going too slow, it's going to fall off at some point when it gets high enough on the track. And just to give you a reminder of what's going on with forces, let's look at the bottom of the track. Of course, gravity's pulling down. There's a normal force pushing up. And the net force has to be sufficient uh, to give me the centripetal acceleration corresponding to the speed here. So I'm going to put in a speed like this, just say V. And we'll make it the same speed up here, not the most realistic setup, but it allows us to get, to get the important thing out of this problem. Um, so to remind you of just the force analysis of this, in, in the bottom state, I have F net equals MA. I may as well do this too, um, just to get everything in here. I know the acceleration points to the center of curvature and has a magnitude of V squared over R. I'm going to analyze that as my positive direction for this guy, negative for this guy. I mean, I should say positive directions down for the top guy. Um, again, I'm doing that just because life is easy. If you know the actual direction of acceleration, to just call that positive. All right, back on track. For the bottom configuration, I have normal forces of a positive. Mg is a negative. That's equal to mv squared over r. And that means my normal force is going to be mg i write it just a tiny bit differently. It's going to be mv squared over r plus mg. In the top configuration, analyze F net equals ma. Of course, gravity is still pulling down. Now that counts as the positive direction. And if you're going fast enough, you're going to have some normal force. And I end up with n plus mg is equal to mv squared over r. In other words, um, gravity is helping out the normal force by pointing to the center of curvature and adding to that centripetal force. So normal force doesn't have to do as much as it did before. Normal force is going to be mv squared over r minus mg. So just at a glance, I can tell that the normal force is less at the top than it was at the bottom. So what does it mean to lose contact That's what we're talking about with making it through the loop or not. What is going on at the cut point there? The idea is that this smaller normal force becomes so small that it actually is momentarily zero. So when you're talking about something losing contact with the surface, you're always talking about normal force becoming zero. All right, so there's some cut point where the normal force is exactly zero right here. And as soon as you go beyond that, normal force will be a little bigger than zero, a little bigger, a little bigger, a little bigger. It reaches its maximum value when you get to the bottom of the curve. So if you're ever asked to find a minimum speed to make it through a loop, this is the key. The normal force is zero right at the top, and it's bigger than zero everywhere else. So this car is literally in free fall, but just for an instant. So let's use this to go ahead and solve for the minimum speed. At the top of the track, I should have a normal force of zero. The mass doesn't matter. I'm going to add the g to the left-hand side and multiply by r, so I get gr equals v squared. So it turns out the minimum speed is going to be square root gr. Plugging in some numbers real quick. That's 9.8, 10. And I end up with a minimum speed of 9.90 meters per second. 